time for some videos, some pantry tours. And first I'm going to show you last year's end of April pantry tour because it's hilarious. A lot of the discussion in that is exactly what we talked about in this year's pantry tour, which is coming up later this week. I honestly, we were going through changes in our diet a year ago, and now we're going through those changes all over again for a different reason. So hope you enjoy 2023's spring pantry tour and stay tuned for the 2024 one. It's finally time to do another pantry tour. We are past mid-April, which means we're almost into gardening season and having some fresh stuff, but this still has to hold us till our next harvest season. We're starting out today in the actual store-bought section of the pantry. Uh, we do keep a few items over here that are from the garden, but the majority of this is store-bought. But I wanted to touch on our squash first because before I go into uh, some of the changes we need to make in our preps, our squash are still holding strong. These are Canada Crookneck. Don't get me wrong, we've had a couple rot outs, um, but we're almost May and these are still perfectly good for eating, which I am just fantastically wonderfully surprised about because we've had real ups and downs, which are very reflected down here in the temperature. It doesn't stay a nice steady temperature, which you'll see uh, coming up here when I show you our potatoes and how much they're growing. So as I said, we are in front of basically the store-bought stuff and we have not purchased a lot of different items. We started eating less carbs this year with doing the pantry challenge in the $50 February, which I believe we have playlists on that. You can check those out because it was a really fun challenge that we had not participated in before. And it really opened our eyes to a lot of different things that we could do to make it a bit more sustainable for us. But we still spent money, we still stocked, we still prepped. And one of the things that we changed was flour, rice, pasta. We haven't purchased any of those in months and we still have lots. I'm a little bit concerned we're just not going to get through that. You'll see a lot of lentils and chickpeas and beans here. These are actually for our chicken feed. They're there if we need them as well as a backup. I've got barley in there. There's stuff like that. We're, we're still stocking those on a very regular basis. One of the things that we've definitely spent money this year is coffee. Uh, we have seven of these beauties because I like to have a year's supply of coffee just in case anything happens and I never go lower than seven. So it's something that we're constantly replenishing, whether it's $20 or $12, a bag, box, whatever you want to call that. Another thing that we've splurged on is going to things like oat flour, a few more of the expensive flours, I call them, rather than that plain white flour. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm going to tell you our numbers for how much we've spent since the challenge. And uh, the reason it seems high, I think, is because we've changed how we eat. We eat a lot of dairy product now um, that hopefully we're not going to have to buy soon because lambs are arriving and I am milking the sheep this year. But definitely putting a lot more into quality flours or quality pastas, things like that. If we're going to eat them, we're making sure they're whole grain, things like that. So between cheese and good pastas, it costs a lot at the grocery store. <laughs> I really haven't featured too much on our herbs because they're kept upstairs in a different area and it's always difficult to tie it into a film um, or video here. But we do keep some down here and these are still from last year. We're still eating 2021s upstairs. I think maybe a couple of them, the oregano would be from 2022, but we save a lot of herbs because we really like to spice our food and make teas and things like that. So that's something that I definitely would recommend, even if you're on a small scale type uh, uh, homestead or in the town, growing some herbs can really, really give you a, a buffer, I guess you could say, that you, you know saves you having to go to the grocery store and buy that sort of stuff. After doing the pantry challenge and then the $50 February challenge for January and February, we really thought that we'd kind of put together what we thought would be I want to say wishful, but um, you know, we thought it was a realistic budget going at $175 a month. That's what I thought moving forward we could potentially achieve. Now, I don't know, we don't track the prices in the grocery store, so I don't know if there is a bit of fluctuation there. I also mentioned we've started eating some better quality stuff that is a little bit pricier than what we would normally eat. I'm going to say that. Uh, we've also had a few, uh, you know, splurges on a few things after doing the two months of not splurging right so you always have that 
So March turned out to actually be a pretty pricey month for us in the grand scheme of things compared to January and February. Uh, in March, we spent $356.56 on groceries. But I will say, in January, we ate a lot of things out of the store-bought pantry as well as our preserved pantry. Um, and I think we did spend a bit restocking those items because it's important to us to make sure we always have those sorts of things. Uh, so there was some extra expenses there. So I do feel it got high. Um, and I'm really hoping when we get to the end of the year, a, a grand total for the year and just kind of average it for a monthly expense, I'd really like to see where we sit because January and February combined, we only spent $160. That's incredible. Um, and uh, definitely, like you, I was saying, that's more than doubled for March. And April is basically sitting at $268. We're almost at the end and there isn't a lot we need because we just did a good shop. So it might not fluctuate too much more than that. But just thought it would be interesting to share since people had followed along on our journey during the pantry challenge. And it was kind of questioned, can we keep that up? Is it something that is maintainable? And I do think if we can figure out the dairy, it's very attainable, but we spent a lot on dairy um, period throughout the whole year. I think we worked it out to be over a thousand dollars on dairy because we're almost a quarter of the way through the year. And in total, we've spent $785. So if we can stay on that trajectory, or improve it over the summer months when we can eat fresh out of the garden, realistically, we're looking at $3,000 spent on groceries this year, which is a huge improvement over last year, even with prices going up. So stay tuned for our end of year, which is a long ways off, I know, but to see if we manage to achieve that. But let's get back to the tour. So you've seen these yellow cat boxes before. These are our potatoes. And we grew something like 220 pounds of potatoes this year, and we really haven't gotten through them. I don't think we're going to grow any less because that's just how we are, but you can see our seed potatoes are just going on these all blues. The russets are pretty much toast. These are our eating ones. These aren't the seed potato ones that we saved. But what I wanted to talk to you about here, these are our red skinned potatoes. And we hummed and hawed about getting rid of planting these because, well, just because. It was one of those, let's minimalize, make things simple, so on and so forth. But you know what? These really are our best keepers. They're still firm. They're leggy, don't get me wrong, but perfectly usable. So I don't think these are going to go off the, uh, the plan for the garden, that's for sure. So anyways, we've got a lot of potatoes to eat. But potatoes are the one carb that we really didn't cut out of our diet. We've kind of substituted it in even, uh, you know, instead of toast with eggs for breakfast, we're having potatoes and eggs. So hopefully these will hold long enough to see us through because as you know, potato harvest season doesn't come until September. So you've seen the store-bought area and a few little tidbits that we have over there. But on our journey over to the preserved area, we have this year's preserving. Uh, yeah, I preserve all year long around here. These are actually our dried beans that we took out of the garden in 2022. And I'm canning them up now because uh, we're to that point that uh, it's easier for me to use them if they're canned up. We're to the point where we're busy. We're coming in at 8, 8.30 at night and we just need a quick meal of chili or something like that to throw together. And having them canned and ready really, really works. So we have 15 jars of mixed it's, I think it's actually six bean medley and we have 16 jars of black beans. Now I still have more black beans I want to make because we had a lot of black beans last year with our Cherokee Trail of Tears. Love those ones and we're certainly going to go with more of them this year. The other thing that I have here that's going to be going onto the pantry which was canned in April is chicken a la king. It's actually chicken and rabbit mixed together. Uh, that's just kind of how we work around here. It's whatever you pull out of the freezer that's going in because this is the time of year. Freezers really need to be starting to get emptied because I need to be able to bung things in here when the early season starts and there's not enough tomatoes ripe to actually make something or there's not enough peas or whatever or things are doing really well and you just don't have time to can them or preserve them. In the freezer they go. So unfortunately both these guys are still almost full. So We've resorted to a third freezer, which is not running yet, but we're going to use it for the opportunity to organize these ones and hopefully get some stuff canned up and ready to go. But 
Last thing I'm going to talk about here before we go to the preserve pantry is our goose lard. I made nine jars of our canned goose lard and they're keeping amazing on the shelf. Beautiful. I opened one just the other day and uh, used it for some baking and it was fantastic, just like it had just been done. So we have five jars left, but that's okay because the geese have got a lot of eggs out there and I sense we're going to have a lot of baby goslings soon. Our preserved from our own harvest type goods are really holding strong this year. I mean, as you can see behind, our shelf's still pretty full. And if you watched our tour, or if you haven't watched our previous tour, I should say, uh, we'll link it above here so you can go check it out. Because I'm not going to go through all this in detail of what everything is. You can go back and watch that one if you really want to know that sort of stuff. I'm just going to touch on some of the things that are missing and some of the things that we definitely need to focus on this year for gardening season, which does come in our planning on what we plant. One thing that we found, and we've talked about this on other videos as well, with changing our diet this year and not doing toasts or very much pancakes or things like that, we really haven't touched the jams or jellies. They're holding strong, even though I didn't make any for 2022. But we'll see if that does get used a little bit in 2023. The fruit has been used up on other things that we've had, smoothies, stuff like that. The enchilada sauce and the August stew have been used quite a bit, and we do have to replenish those this year. A big hit around this house is lemon basil soup, whether we have it with rabbit meat or just as a vegetarian type soup on its own. And that is something that has depleted. And I have actually used the box that we had on the bottom as well. So we're down from about 70 jars down to about 20. So I think it'll hold us till the next tomato season, but we'll see, watch this space to find out. But the one thing that we really haven't used very much of this year is our tomato juice. And I'm gonna show you in one second how much tomato juice we have left. And this is influencing our plans with our garden because last year we planted a lot of pineapple and white Thomasil tomatoes in order to make our blended yellow tomato juice that we love. And maybe, just maybe, went a little bit overboard and made a little too much tomato juice for what we actually consume. And there's a reason for that, which I'll tell you about in a moment as well. But we're gonna show you the tomato juice that's left first. Right here is our 12 jars of lemon basil soup. And we had eight up on the top shelf. So like I said, 20 jars of that left to see us through. But you can see down here, we still have almost six dozen tomato juice, plus one from 2021 still over on the next shelf. So we have a lot of tomato juice. Nice thing is I can convert this tomato juice into tomato soup or my lemony basil soup if we get ambitious. But definitely not planting as much with the yellow tomatoes this year. So one of the things that was a big ticket item, as you saw in my last pantry tour video, was the applesauce. We have over 300 apple trees and we create a lot of apple products. And applesauce was a big one. I had about, I think 150 jars. I could go back to that video and see if I said it or not. But either way, we have managed to progress through almost all of the 2021 applesauce and we're starting to move up our 2022 applesauce but I still have a lot of that left, which I will show from the bottom shelf in a moment. One thing we did already start this year is restocking. And here we have the Polly's Moroccan stew, which I did a video on this recipe, not as a canning video, just as an individual meal, but it is a delicious stew that we decided to can. And uh, I actually forgot all about it until I went to do this video and went, I made that and canned it. We haven't even eaten any yet. So that's good because we're running out of some things. But Polly's Moroccan stew is new. We made that in the uh, beginning of March, I believe. Now that I'm out of the way, there's probably a bit better view here of some of the blank spots in the applesauce. Again, as you saw in that other video, we have lots of boxes down lower, which we then just kind of, as we deplete something, we bring it up and keep it up on the top shelves so I know when I'm missing something. So as you can see, things like our chili sauce, corn relish, Thai sauce, and the big one, ketchup, are really, really getting low. I do not like to only have six jars of ketchup left. That's like a, you know, uh, almost a breakdown point because I'm like obsessive about being prepped and having years worth of stuff. So ketchup is a big one this year, which is why we are planting a lot, a lot of San Marzano tomatoes because those San Marzanos are also used to make 
my curry sauce. Butter chicken, curry sauce, and gelfrizi. Both of those, I'm down to only six jars as well. And like I said, it's gotta make it till tomato season, but that's okay. We have a lot of other things that really should get eaten up anyways. So the last thing I'm really gonna touch on in this section of the pantry is our lamb stew. This is something that uh, we go through a lot of jars of this. This I believe was made in February of 2023 and we are down to only seven jars left. So we'll be replenishing that soon, but it's a staple and we just keep producing that year round. I always try and have sort of 12 jars sitting here at any given point. Um, so it is a little bit low and I don't have any in a box below. So we're gonna be get making that pretty soon. But down below, you can see what is left of the stash. We have over on the far side there, there are five boxes full, 12 boxes of apple sauces. Then we've got a kind of mixture box of Italian zucchini and things like that. Uh, there's some more charred salsa. Then we have broth and the rest of the tomato juice. But really we are making a good dent in what we have preserved from our own harvest. And the evidence of that is in all the empty jars that you always forget you need to find a spot to put the empty jars because they build up. I think I counted, what did I count the other day? I'm pretty sure it was 800, almost 800 empty jars floating around the house that are kind of stuck in this nook and that nook and this pile. And anyways, I'm starting to want to refill these jars so that I can get them onto shelves where they make a bit more sense. So I guess where I'm going with all of this that is still behind me for our food stash is it's important to plan for a full year. It's not just making it till the next growing season. This needs to be until the next harvest season. So that is part of planning out your garden as well. And we're gonna have some videos coming up on why we've made some of the decisions we did on how many tomatoes we planted and things like that, because that's information that I think uh, is very useful for people. And it's certainly useful for us to go through it. And it's wonderful to document it in a YouTube video that we can come back to later because we never write anything down.